Now for some actual painting. We're going to use my favorite painting brush. It's called the Coarse Watercolor. You want to make sure you have these settings. These are the shape and the textures you need. And you want to make sure the brush type is on natural blend. The default might be either synthetic paint or standard. You want natural blend. Now we need to pick a nice dark navy blue color. It's not all the way on the black. You want it to be just enough where you can tell it's blue. Now we're going to really start doing some detail. So we're going to create a new layer. You don't want to draw on your base painting. You want to start a brand new layer in case you make any mistakes. And we're just going to start following the reference photo and your guidelines in the sketch. You can turn down the sketch's opacity if you need to, which I have done here. I don't like it too dark, but I still want to be able to see it. So you just start following the shapes of the darkest darks with this brush. Don't worry about how sloppy you are, but you want to make sure you're going the same direction as the hairs and his muscle structure that you can see. Same with the mane and in the ears. Just follow these shapes. You can change the size of your brush as often as you need. Have the opacity down to about half, actually pretty low, because you want your paint to get darker as you layer it on itself, just like real paint. So then it has a nice blended effect. It'll blend with itself very nicely. So we keep doing that. Now, once you've got all that the darkest darks in there and some of the shapes of the hair. You want to get your smudge wash brush again and lightly again go over all of it. You don't want it to erase. You just want to blend it all in very nicely, keeping those tones and highlights intact. You just want to soften all of it. Now in the areas where there's a pattern in the hair, like the speckles on his legs and his belly. Try to go very lightly. You want to see some of your brush strokes and some of that texture. Next, when you're done with that, then we will pick your paintbrush. Again, the same paintbrush. Make sure it's on natural blend. And it, make sure this is also on a new layer. And we're gonna choose this light peach color. Now that's going to be in the areas where you can see some of this reflected light in the shadow areas. So anywhere it's just a little bit lighter. You can do that, changing the brush size and opacity as much as you need. I don't really change the opacity too much. I pretty much keep it where it is but I change the size all the time. Now you can choose, again, the wash smudge brush. These are my two favorite brushes. I use them the most. And we're going to go back and blend these again. Make sure you can still see that color in there, but you're turning this into that reflected light that's bouncing up off the snow. Great, now once you're finished with that, make a new layer, and now we are going to tackle these kind of rounded speckle shapes along his belly. So I went through and I found a good brush texture, and I found it here under the splatter brushes in the brush library, and I moved it into my toolbar. You can just tap it and drag it over so that you can get to it faster. And then I changed the uh, some of these settings. I made the spacing at four, otherwise they're all like 
merged together. You want to move this spacing setting to about four is about right. Now we're going to pick a new color and make sure we're on a new layer. And this one should be a very light baby blue color. And just sort of dot these light speckled areas, these blue kind of star-shaped patterns. If this was watercolor, this would work really nice to add salt to the water, you know, drop the salt on the picture and let it dry because it creates those nice kind of crystallized kind of patterns. But we have to mimic that by using the spatter brush seems to work really nice. Then you're going to go back over it extremely lightly with your wash smudge brush just to kind of soften them a little bit, but you don't want to get rid of them entirely. Be very careful with that. Now we're going to pick a new uh, color and we're going to actually put this layer underneath this powder blue speckled layer. And then we're going to pick the navy blue color, just like the one we used before. And the speckled, br this brush is the camo brush. And you can use these. Again, the spacing should be up to about 5.2. The roundness and rotation could be up all the way. We're just going to now speckle underneath in those dark, darker areas. Follow the guide in the reference photo to put those in there on the back leg here in the belly. And then use your smudge wash brush again to just lightly blend those out. Do it as often as you need to. If you need to come back over it with the light blue, go back into that layer and add some more. Keep doing it until you like what you see. Create a new layer and we're going to use our favorite paintbrush again and we are going to choose this color. It's a kind of a true blue sky blue color and with a larger size brush, we're gonna come over all these reflected blue light areas on his side that's all in the shadows. Keep them light. You wanna still see what's underneath it. Then we're going to do another layer on top of that one. Do not blend, do not merge your layers yet. We are going to now choose uh, layer options for this new layer. Tap on that layer to choose layer options. And then under the blending, right now it's set to normal, you want to set it to soft glow. Now we're going to take that same blue color and that same paintbrush and just go over those same areas very lightly. And then we're going to blend both layers just enough. But you want that light layer to show and have kind of this glowing effect. Then you can merge those two layers together. Now, in order to do that, what you should do first, because sometimes you can lose that soft glow if you merge it just with kind of a very uh, transparent layer underneath it, like it is in this case. So what you want to do first is the layer that is not soft glow, merge that with your finished painting underneath and then merge the soft glow layer onto that one. You should do it in that order. Okay, next we have a new color we get to choose. And again, we're going to use the same paintbrush that we've been using, my favorite one, the coarse watercolor brush. And we're going to choose a nice kind of yellow ochre olive color and this is a new layer again, and you're going to just paint in some of these areas where you can see kind of this more brownish yellow color underneath. It's kind of where the light and the dark of the shadows and highlights are meeting is where you really see that the most. Okay, and then you're gonna blend that out with your wash blending brush again, your smudge brush. Now we're going to do a little trick to make this yellow ochre layer have kind of a glow effect. So we're going to select the yellow ochre layer, 
then tap on it again to get the options. Then we're going to choose duplicate and now we have two exact copies of the yellow ochre layer. Now the top one, you're going to tap on it to get the layer options. Go to the blending mode and choose the soft glow. And now you're going to bring down the opacity of that layer just a little bit so that it's not overpowering the layer underneath it. And then there's a kind of nice balance between the two. Now we're going to really get the darkest dark detail in there. What we need is the primary pencil. It's just your, the default pencil for sketchbook. And you're gonna have these settings. It's gonna, we're gonna keep it fairly small, but you want it to taper as you use lighter pressure. But you want the opacities and the flow for each of them up all the way. Now we're gonna go back and play, pick the same navy blue color that we used before. And you're basically gonna go right over these areas, but zoom in on your photograph because you really wanna see where these dark kind of wrinkle shapes around the eyes and the nose are. The darkest part of the ears, the shadow bits underneath the hair, around the lips, and follow the shapes follow the shape of the hair, the direction the hairs are laying. When you're done with that pencil detail with the navy blue, you want to just again lightly go over it with your smudge brush, wash brush, but don't lose your brush strokes. You want to keep the integrity of the, that darkness, those shadows. Now we are going to fix the hair a bit. We are going to take our, this smudge brush, has a white end on it and it's just called hair. You can find it in the library. Move it over to your palette, your brush palette and use these settings. We're gonna keep it fairly small and we're just gonna go over the ends of our hair where we cut it out to kind of blend it together. So it looks a little more wispy. Same thing on the tail. And next comes my favorite part. We're gonna use our favorite paintbrush again. We're gonna create a new layer. And we're gonna make this layer a soft glow layer again. And we're gonna choose a very, very off-white cream white. And we're just gonna go anywhere where the lightest highlights are on the image. It's like painting with light. This is my favorite part. We're gonna go over the whole image. You can even add it in the shadow areas where there's some reflected light because once you blend it, it'll really make it pop. So we just keep doing this in all the lightest areas. you're done with that you can take your blending smudge brush again the wash smudge and just like before blend it all out keep it even and smooth and your, your pressure even and just kind of soften it all up After everything's nice and smoothed out and looks the way you want it then we are going to choose the synthetic bristle round brush you can find that in the library and use these settings we're gonna use that same light cream color but this time we're not going to have the soft glow on and we're just going to add some hairs so that the area we cut around the mane and tail isn't so sharp. We're just going to kind of make this look a little more natural. Put some more hairs in there and some whiskers too. And 
then you can also kind of fill in with this cream, some blue and some bright white and just sort of, sort of make some kind of ground, have it overlap part of his feet too in the front so it doesn't look like he's just floating. Now you can add a new layer underneath and play around with different background gradient fills, try different colors. You can use this salty watercolor fan brush and just lightly paint in some cloud shapes. Go back over it with the wash blending brush and just smooth some of these out, make them look more cloud-like. Just keep playing with it until you're happy with the results. And then once you've signed your name to it, you can choose the sketch layer, open the options panel and delete that layer. And then you can choose any of the other layers, open the options panel and merge all so that your entire painting is all on one layer. And here you go, a finished horse painting. I hope you enjoyed learning how to paint this horse using Autodesk Sketchbook for the iPad. Be sure to subscribe. I have many more of these planned. And don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and stay creative.